the great thing about ice is that it's so versatile and it's so forgiving it allows you to go back make changes and nothing is really ever destroyed in the process in the case of using all three trees instead of dealing with just the fall tree I'm going to use the good old group. I'm going to take all three of my trees, create a group for them, and I'll name the group Tree Instance Group. There we go. And I'll actually point the instance shape now to the group rather than to the individual object. So in my Explorer, I'll pick the group. Now the problem is that it's still only picking the first object in the group. The first object in the group being the fall tree. The reason it's doing that is because the instance shape is now looking for an index of objects. It's looking actually to pull it a single object out of the three. And we can actually have it randomly pick a value for us. If we have three objects in our instance group, then we have an index that starts at the zeroth value and will go up to a value of 2. So if I set the index to 1, we get a different tree. If I set the index to 2, we get the second tree. Anything out of the range of 2 will not work. We can also choose the out of range group index to clamp or we can simply just wrap it around. So what I'm going to do is just leave it at clamp for now. We'll explore the difference between the two. And I'll go in and get a randomize um, compound. If I go and look under my filter, I'll look for random. I'll look for randomized value by range. So this will give us a min and a max. And you'll notice that the types don't really match here. We have an integer type index, as index is represented by a whole number. And our randomized value by range is outputting a scalar type, which is giving us um, a floating point value. I do want the min max value between 0 and 2 but I want this to output an integer and one of the great things about XSI and I don't want this to be animated once the trees are generated uh, using a certain index I want it to stay with that tree but one of the great things is the fact that these are polymorphic ports again if I click the output and connect it to the input of the index, uh, instance shape using the index you'll notice that the data types automatically change for us so randomized value by range now is an integer value and if I jump back into the randomized value by range notice that the data typing is just using whole integer numbers so if I was to pull between 0 and 2 notice that I'm getting a variety of these different trees now so we're getting a little bit of breakup we're getting some different heights and uh, that that bodes well for us so we have our next problem solved we have our trees they've been randomized and the next thing we need to look at doing is adjusting the size of our trees maybe getting some randomness in there as well